Hello? Hello? Hi, how's it going? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you very much for taking time to do this interview. No problem at all. It's just a pleasure. Oh, fantastic. And uh, uh, with that, I mean, it's a tremendous honor to be able to talk to you. Uh, uh, of course, being a part of so many bands that I truly love and uh, being able to sing on one of my favorite albums of all time, it's great to be able to talk to you here with some brand new music from Green Incarnation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Oh, no problem at all. And uh, along with that, I mean, it's it's great to see that uh, the, the brand new album from Green Incarnation is available now through Season of Missed with Leaves of Yesteryear. Uh, this is an album I've been waiting for for so very long, and I'm so happy to see that this did finally see the light of day. Yeah, it's been a, it's, it's been a while. It has. Um, of course, for us, it's like we finished the album half a year ago, uh, like in well, five months ago in November. So we've been waiting a waiting impatiently until until May the 8th uh, so it was a big weekend for us oh so cool so w with that in mind I mean what was it like uh, uh, in the beginning stages of being able to write for this album yeah it's like when we decided to, to get back together for the light of day day of darkness anniversary in 2016 we decided basically in uh, well, we decided in late 2014 and used the entire of 2015 to prepare and rehearse and plan and book gigs and stuff like that. So uh, the, the original plan was to do that anniversary year and then see how that felt and then discuss and feel <clears throat> if we still had it in us to, to make new music together. So we didn't actually decide that before, before after finishing the 2016 uh, Legend Day, Day of Darkness and anniversary year. And... Uh, uh, I guess maybe you could say we had a slightly different approach maybe to, to make records after so many years uh, because, you know, looking back at, on what we did, we're obviously really proud of our first period. Um, uh, but also we have a chance now to to redefine redefine reincarnation a little bit and and what we what we decided to to go for was to like let's see like we've worked on on the live shows with you know what is making green carnation standing out for other bands what what, what are we doing really good and and what are we doing just the same as everybody else so we've <clears throat> since 2016 we've been working on that on a live setting and we thought we would do that for the new album as well is kind of to 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 bring the essence of the band into one album and to to use all our best sides on one album um, and maybe just drop the things that we that we don't that we're not unique at doing if you know what i mean um that's a long answer but uh, yes there was a lot of thinking behind it and, and therefore it also took a couple of years for us to to be able to make the right kind of songs and to be able to put together the right kind of songs uh, in order to to make an album that was you know building a bridge through the entire career of reincarnation and that's incredible to me because when i first got the chance to be able to listen to this album it, it, it really did dawn on me especially when it got to near the end of solitude where it, it feels like all five of these songs sound like they would be so perfect in a live setting and i'm glad to see that that was actually in mind with uh being able to capture uh, what the sound of green incarnation is all about and it you know from the, the sounds of it, I mean, every song sounds like it can be replicated live. Oh, yeah, yeah, indeed. And we're probably going to play all, all of those live. Uh, we're not necessarily going to play all of them live um, right away. But, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a kind of a, a thing we've taken from our live set but because we've put so much pressure on ourselves in order to, well, for our live shows, uh, especially, you know, coming back with Light of Day, Day of Darkness, which was a huge amount of work. Like, we worked on that for more than a year, almost one and a half years, in order to get that up to the level we needed it to be, in order to have this comeback year. And we're thinking the same way now with the, with the album, that we, we kind of, we knew exactly what we wanted to do. And uh, <clears throat> I know some people react that, uh, on that there are only five songs on the album. It's like 45 minutes of music almost, so, so people are not really complaining on that, but... But what they don't uh, get, I think, is that like we could have put on one or two more new songs. But in order for this album to be exactly like, like we wanted it to be, we needed, for example, Solitude to end, to end off the album. Uh, uh, and that's about not compromising on your ideas and not like uh, uh, putting like an unnecessary song on the album that 
that would ruin the album for us, and I'm sure it would ruin the album for many more people. So, so it's um, yeah, it's an interesting thing to be a hundred percent uncompromising on your own arts, but and not everybody would always understand that. But the response, to be honest, on the album has been amazing. Oh, it it truly is an amazing album, and I'm glad to see that uh, the band had zero compromises to it. And of course, I will always take new Green Incar- Green Carnation music whenever yeah. it's available. Uh, but when it's in album form like this, I mean, with it being just under 45 minutes, these five yep. songs work so perfectly together. I can't imagine one of them being taken out or any additional songs being put in. I mean, it just feels like this was the collective that was meant to come out in 2020. Yeah, yeah, you're perfectly, perfectly correct. And, and uh, uh, I think also people that listen to the album from the first and through the album to the last song, I think they would get that a little bit easier than if they just jump in on one song and then listen to another song and then, you know, so because it, everything and and obviously we were <coughs> discussing uh, uh, which song first and second and, you know, and, and third and fourth and fifth and, and we actually tried out make, uh, doing uh, changing Hounds and, and Solitude, but that kind of ruined the entire uh, feel of the album, not ruin the entire feel of the album, but it, need, it just needed to be exactly what, like we, like for us at least, not exactly what like we ended up with doing it. Oh yeah, I I absolutely feel that the track order is just perfect. I mean, being able to have uh, what was the first music video for the band's career with Leaves of Yesteryear, and then yeah, then getting yeah. heavier with Sentinels, uh, the giant epic with My Dark Reflections of Life and Death. I mean, it's just it's a perfect track order for this album. I think so as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and and speaking of that, uh, going back to the first part of that, I mean, it was great to see that there actually was a music video from Green Carnation, and with it being Leaves of Yesteryear, which I really love the way that video turned out. I mean, I really feel like it hit the song perfectly. Oh yeah, it did, and, and we, we we've known Costin Girano in, for a few years, and we even worked with him on the on the concert film uh, The Last Day of Darkness. He was like we had did this art uh, project with, with that one, and. Um, um, he also he also made the cover for that. So so Costin knows the band really well, and uh, we gave him two options. We gave him uh, the lyrics and um, and obviously the song uh, uh, Leaves of Yesteryear and also Sentinels. Uh, so it could have been Sentinels, but he just fell completely for the entire you know well everything about Leaves of Yesteryear. Uh, and even though it's a long it's a long music video and it's a long single, he really insisted on doing that because that meant extra much to him. So we basically gave him a, like a full freedom because we trusted that he knows what we want to say with this. He knows the band, he knows our, our identity and what we want to do with this album. So, and it's no point for us, um, you know, putting a lot of, like he's the one with the, with the talent for this. And, and we wanted him to, to do a hundred percent like uh, you know like he wanted to express the song and that's why we chose him you know it it does put a smile on my face uh, thinking about that as well because you know uh, if, you know for a lot of bands having an eight minute long music video is uh, quite lengthy but i'm also thinking about how my favorite song my favorite album of all time is exactly 60 minutes and just yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and you know just th- thinking about how you know that's that's a perfect length for that album that song with a light of day day of darkness and just thinking about how eight minutes is, you know, short in comparison, but it's long to so many other bands. Yeah, it is. And also we had some comments with, from some friends that when we put out the teaser for My Dark Reflections of Life and Death, and they said, like, you know, you know it's Green Carnation when they put out an eight-minute teaser for a song. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's true. And I remember checking out that teaser and I was just so excited to see what the rest of the song and, and of course the album was going to be like too. And I'm so glad to see the way that it did turn out and, you know, having that right in the middle of the album is so great. Yeah, it was, that was an, that was an important choice for us. And I think it was the right choice for us as well. Uh, It's also for, for us to show its importance to the album, because again, we could have chosen to do two new songs, um, put two new songs in instead of that one, but but see, like I told you, we knew what we wanted to do with this album, and 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 we knew the importance of that song, and and uh, 
and also we knew that it had to be the centerpiece of the album. Oh yeah, and again, thinking about it from the the fan perspective as well, I mean, I do love the fact that it is there on the album because again, it does show off all the different sides of Grand Incarnation, whether uh, you got the proggy side, you got the heavier side, you got the more of the epic side, you got the lighter side. I mean, everything that I do love about Green Incarnation is shown off somewhere on this album. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so we I think we might have succeeded then at least for you with, with doing exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, and that was just to, you know, because our first four or five albums was a constant search with new genres, with new influences and everything. And we found something on each of these albums. And, and you, I think you people who know Green Carnation's career would recognize elements from all our first five albums in in this new one. But it's also, of course, with a new twist, uh, because we, we, we've been, you know, we're all 15 to 20 years older than when we did those la uh, like last albums. And uh, obviously you change as a person and you change uh, as a musician, you get more experienced in life and, and also with the composing process and playing together and everything. So so it was also important for us that needed this fresh sound as well, because it would, would make... It wouldn't make um, sense to us to, to like copy what we did before, but to bring in elements from what we did before in new in a new wrapping was kind of the the idea behind this. Plus, I think also that we added some elements that haven't been, um, I think, the progressive elements and and the progressiveness of the songwriting is a little bit like there's there's a little like there's new things there, and also I think the heaviness of the album is like you don't I don't think we have. Like Lights of Day consists of everything, obviously, but but the the albums after Lights of Day of Darkness, I think this is heavier than any of them. Oh, without question, and you know, right when it started kicking in with Sentinels, like it, it blew me away for the first time. Like hearing that heaviness that was going on within the band. I mean, I, you know, it's like I I expected that it, it always could be in there in the band, but it was so great to be able to hear that side of the band. Yeah, and that was one of the one of the elements we we actually in the songwriting process and, and when deciding on the sound in the studio and everything, it was quite obvious for us that, that we wanted to go in that direction and, and you know, the more progressive songwriting. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so these are, I wouldn't say new elements, but they're developed elements at least. Oh, yeah, and I think that's the, the right word to say it's uh, uh, with a more developed in, in the way to do it. And again, where everything is at in 2020, I just love where it's at right now, being able to show all these different sides of what the band is about. And I'm glad to see that the, the reactions that I've been seeing have been almost universally positive. I mean, every time that I'm looking yeah. for it, I just see so much love for the band. So excited to see you back in full force with a new album. And, you know, just like me, just so excited to be able to see new material from the band. Yeah, it's it's been quite overwhelming to be honest with you, and, and especially every everything um, accumulated this weekend with the, or from Wednesday when we did this we did this uh, kind of closed uh, listening party together with me and Stein, like this live stream, like we listen, like we presented the songs uh, on on a live broadcast and 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 switched onto the album and listened through the through the entire album together with. I think there was like a hundred or two hundred, you know, of our uh, closest fans, I would say. Uh, and already then was like the feedback was amazing on the songs and everything, and and also already from releasing um, the single in in the beginning of March, it's been, you know, the expectation has been building, and um, and we've been quite confident that the album is is really good because we we think so ourselves, and. Of course, if everybody had hated um, um, the single, uh, we would probably be a bit, you know, nervous or something. But we, we've been quite confident that, that the people, our fans, are going to like it, and I think even think we're going to maybe gain some new fans on this because it's uh, yeah, it's been almost 15 years since our last album, and people have you know started to listen to music like this the last 15 years as well. So so hopefully that'll happen again uh, as well. Oh, absolutely. And hopefully when the world does get back to some sense of normal and we're able to experience live shows again, I'm, I just can't wait to see how these songs are performed in a live setting. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're working on that right now because we're going to do this. Um, we're going to do this uh, well, in uh, 12 days or something. Uh, we're going to do this worldwide live stream release party. Uh, with no uh, or no audience, but with a full live production with lots of cameras and uh, and stuff. So so, but of course it's not the same as as being there. But I think we're gonna 
you know, Green Carnation is a is a, like a little bit of a more is more band. So we're not gonna do it exactly in our living room. We're gonna find a, a big, or well, we have found a big nice venue, and we're gonna invest a lot in you know lights and creating the atmospheres that we want to to um, to be able to do these songs in the best possible way. Oh, that's going to be simply incredible, too. I'm so excited for that. And I'm glad to see that, um, you know, despite the circumstances of what's going on in the world right now, that uh, the band is going forward and being able to put on a production such as that. Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, we were one of the first bands to announce that we're going to we're gonna cancel the, the release party and do it on, on a live stream show instead. Uh, and in the meantime, all, all, all the other bands in the world have done live shows, basically, but... But we were like, say in say one month ago, in the beginning of April, we didn't really know if, if it would be possible for us to, to do that because we do need a kind of a lot of people working on that show in order for us to, to be able to do it. And but now in Norway, we are we are slowly but steadily uh, opening up now. So so uh, as long as the the development goes in the right direction and and that you know the the, the virus doesn't explode again uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna be able to do that show in the way we hope for uh, and, and that's just simply incredible and you know it's it's really is making the best of a bad situation and i just imagine that final product i mean obviously we're a little bit away from that happening but i'm just envisioning the final products about using all the cameras and lights and the production and everything about it and it just it just feels like it's going to be such a grandiose show and i yeah. I, I simply can't wait for it no, we really, we really hope so. This is new for us as well, but we, of course, we're working with, we're working with a really professional uh, crew, and uh, we just have to trust that they, and we know that they, <laughs> they know uh, what they're doing. But um, but it's it's gonna be strange also to to stand there and try and perform something that normally is so important for me at least, or I guess all the other guys in the band as well. You know, the connection with the crowd, uh, the 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 two way communication with the crowd. When it comes to emotions and stuff, so so that's going to be interesting to see how that how that feels. Oh, very much so. And yeah, I mean that's got me uh, thinking back uh, to obviously everything that was going on before uh, the writing process for Leagues of Yesteryear, and you know with uh, the band being able to uh, celebrate the release of Light of Day, Day of Darkness, which I was very fortunate to be able to be at Prague Power USA and experience that in that live setting, a, a song I never thought I was going to be able to hear live, despite it being my favorite song, my favorite album. And when I was there in 2015, and I I saw it announced that the band was going to be there next year to do it i couldn't have been more excited and i was so happy to see that everything did go forward and you were able to come to america and do that oh yeah that was a great that's a that was a great experience for us uh and you know for uh, for glenn to believe in us like that and and to you know uh just um basically help us with uh, being able to do that uh it wasn't a it wasn't the cheapest uh, concert he's ever produced because we're many people traveling from a long, long way from the other side of the world, basically. And, and he just, Glenn uh, just really wanted to do it and showed so much faith in us. So so we were ha happy to, to deliver because, yeah, it was certainly a very uh, responsive crowd and, uh, yeah, just a great experience for us that. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, there was there was a bit of fear going on with that, too, because I know with uh, Prog Power, especially with uh, the last decade or more, I mean, with uh, visa issues, especially getting harder and harder to be able to come to America and it being so much more expensive to be able to come over here to America. It's like it was always on the back of my mind if you were actually still going to be able to come forward and be able to uh, do this. But again, just uh, when I finally saw you on stage being able to uh, sing right before you get into it, I mean, I was it's just I realized I was there live this was actually happening and being able to experience this song live and everything that went into it it's like it still is my favorite show oh, my my favorite set that i've ever seen in a live setting oh wow that's amazing Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm so glad that you were able to do that, too, and, you know, be able to celebrate an album like that. And then, you know, obviously being able to uh, give so much praise to that album and then being able to finally start working on new music. I mean, I, even though that is such an incredible song, I can only imagine for the band, it, it had to be so refreshing to be able to work on new material right after that. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. And, and, you know, it's I'm really happy we did what we did, uh, and I'm really happy that we put so much effort into it we even 
you know, changed the lineup a little bit. We added another guitarist, then we brought back the keyboard player uh, that used to be the producer of the album. He's also the producer of, of the new album, actually, but he's not playing keyboards anymore in the band, uh, Andre Kirksola. Uh, and there was just so so much that needed to to be worked on in order for this to to like work it up on stage again. And um, I'm glad we did it, uh, and I'm glad we were su successful with doing it because. Because, as I said to you, there was also an option that we were going to do that, and that was it, you know, because if we thought it was, you know, too too much work for too little joy, for example, or something like that. But, again, the feedback from the people, like, that's also the, one of the reasons why we got back together, I think, is is that we really missed the bond we had with, like, have with our uh, fans. Uh, we created a strong bond with our fans until 2006, and, and we've started i guess talking about it might have been you know fun to try and play again and i think maybe the main motivation for that was that we basically missed missed being able to communicate with our fans oh yeah and yeah just just going back and thinking about that in 2016 and just seeing that reception when everyone was getting on stage all the way uh, an hour later to when the set was complete and just hearing the crowd just absolutely roar for the band i mean it was great to be able to see that kind of reaction and, and i'm i'm glad glad to see like uh, I remember the smile on the band's face being able to just enjoy everything that was going on and yeah I mean I'm glad to see that that reception was there and it was worthwhile to be able to continue on as a band because uh, having leaves of yesteryear still coming out here in 2020 with uh, all of this virus th stuff that's going on right now I mean this has just been such a great relaxing album for me to be able to enjoy despite the rest of the world you know going through a huge pandemic like this yeah, and it was an issue that we had needed to discuss with our label. Uh, is it is it is like is it the right thing for us to to release the album now, or should we like postpone everything until you know uh, who knows when? But we decided together with the label to go for doing this. You know, at least um, the the digital uh, launch for the album because we we were already halfway through the promo period when when the coronavirus came and. Uh, I think it was a good choice. Um, the physical albums are also on the way to the, to, to the people who have uh, pre-ordered them. And it's just basically, the album is going to be a bit late out in the stores, but that may, might not be a big difference because the stores aren't really open, I guess. So, yeah, I think, I think it was the right choice to, to go ahead. And, and I have also been thinking of that, like, at least for me, I've had more time for music since the pandemic came because I don't have, you know, I don't have a big family to take care of and stuff I have myself and I can do whatever I want after I'm finished with my home office at four o'clock. So which makes it easy for me to listen to music. And I think when seeing the numbers that have, you know, checked out the new album on, you know, Spotify and, and on YouTube and stuff, it seems like, you know, people have the time to enjoy an album now. And, and so maybe that, that was just like, I wouldn't say a positive thing necessarily, but I don't think it was a very negative thing for us uh, with the pandemic when it comes to the attention and, you know, from, from people and stuff. So yeah, I think that was, uh, that was, you know, a wise choice to go, go ahead with it. Oh, for sure. So, you know, with that in mind, I mean, uh, with you saying you're able to be able to spend more time uh, listening to music, like, what are you currently listening to? Uh, like, <laughs> I'm the guy in, in Green Carnation, I think, that listens uh, the most to new music. I, I really find it interesting to listen to to new music in different, you know, in different genres. Uh, the last couple of years, I've been having fun with, you know, diving into genres that I don't know too much about. So, so last summer, I, I um, dove into the uh, sludge genre, for example, and I checked out and listened a lot to sludge metal and, and uh, found some really, like for me, hidden treasures that people that are into sludge music probably would, would uh, laugh at me for, for saying that this was new for me. But that, but that was kind of a genre that I wasn't too familiar with. Before. So And also, I've been, I don't know if you know a, a festival in Europe called Roadburn. Oh, the Roadburn yes. Festival. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that festival. And, and uh, they, they had just such a great focus when it comes to artists. It's not about genres and stuff. It's just about quality and, and in different genres. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a genre like genre isn't isn't important for me either so so i just appreciate good music uh, so so i've been diving into that you know roadburn um 
not a genre, but that, like those, I would say maybe a little bit underground bands that are like never going to be world stars because they, be, maybe you could say that it's re really uncompromising music. Uh, that's the team of the Roadbound Festival because uh, because it just seems to be like the, yeah, just so many great artists that I've never ever heard of before. So so I'm kind of digging into that kind of, you know, era of, of, the, of the business. I, I, don't, I don't go and listen to 10-year-old Metallica albums and stuff right now because because I think it's more interested with the contemporary artists doing something new. And I'd love to see that. I mean, uh, the fact that you are getting into sludge metal, that you're getting into like the lineups and rosters that have been a part of Roadburn, you know, being able to check out things that, that uh, you weren't as familiar with. And I think that's such a great thing to be able to do as a musician, as an artist, because even if you don't use those in your own music, I always feel like being able to listen to as much music as you enjoy in so in any yeah. style that it is really opens up inspiration and creativity in your mind oh it does indeed and and for me it's a it's a it's a great it's a great thing to be able to to listen to new music and uh yeah it's so so that way i've also you know uh, been listening a lot to music during the pandemic uh, times and um and i've enjoyed it also i have a new project going with myself uh, uh to listen to albums from the start to to the end uh and being very you know um uh, not analytic about it but you know there are like for example operation mind crime by by queensreich i had listened to a song here and a song there but i hadn't really listened through the album and like properly listened to it without doing anything else with my headsets on and lying on the sofa and kind of just close my eyes and listen and, and have an hour or something for myself you know so in that's also something i've enjoyed really much lately to it's about taking the music a bit more serious as well i guess because uh giving it full attention oh yeah and that that's another thing that i really do uh, hope happens uh, with everything that's going on in the world with uh, the pandemic um, and and the virus and everything that's going along with that is I mean there is so much downtime for uh, most yeah. of the world and most musicians and artists and I really hope during this time that there is a lot of inspiration and creativity that's going on and you know once once things get back to a somewhat kind of normal I just really hope that there is just going to be this grand explosion of new music to be able to check out because it, it, people are going to be able to have the time to really fine-tune these songs, really come up with new inspiration and creativity, and hopefully going forward, being able to show that off in the world. Yeah, indeed, and I think like, all people, being a musician or not, react differently on this, you know, because, you know, people with three small kids and home office and stuff, I, I understand that you don't have time for being, uh, like, <laughs> too creative, but there are also many people that do have the time to be creative, and and, uh, and I've been lucky to, lucky to be a bit creative together with Stan Orgo, the, the bass player of Reincarnation, and it's like, on the new album, he's, like, we've worked a lot together on, on, the, on the structures of new songs and everything. And we, uh, during the pand pandemic and through maybe a hundred telephone calls and emails, and we've been together a couple of times as well, when I was going to do vocals and stuff, we finished a brand new song as well. A ten, ten and a half minute, oh, ten minute song uh, uh, that we've, you know, finished a demo for. So, so that's been, that's been nice as well. Sten Roger has been hugely, like, I think he has wrote uh, an entire solo album as well for the last two months. Oh, that, that's just simply incredible. And, you know, I, I love the fact that, that that is happening right now. And obviously, like you said, you know, having a home office, being able to uh, raise kids, be a father, and, uh, you, you know, still being able to make the time to be able to uh, sit down, enjoy music, and also being able to still be able to uh, write music as well i mean i'm glad to see that you are using this time to be able to continue what you want to do yeah because we're in a bit of a like a creating momentum in stan Rogo, i would say uh, and we were kind of the first few weeks of the pandemic we were we were trying to be creative and see how can we be in the same room without being in the same room and we we talked to some producer friends and stuff and tried it with uh, zoom and everything and we it was it was it wasn't a big success, to be honest with you, but we managed in the end to, to communicate in a way that, that, like, he sent some ideas, I developed them, and I put them together in maybe a different, um, uh, in a different way, and we need a new theme here and there, and blah, 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 and he sent some suggestions, and, and yeah. So I think we're on version number 18 or 19 of that new song, and, and on Friday, actually on the day that we released Leaves of Yesteryear, 
we presented the Finnish demo to some of the other guys in the band. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, what was yeah. the feedback that you got for that new song? Uh, the feedback, we, we've shown it to, well, all the people we've shown it to has been really, really liking it. And, and some have even said that it's, uh, I don't know if I dare to say this, they've told me. And you no, know, just say it, whatever it is. Oh, it's better than the album. <laughs> <laughs> which which is a good thing because we're really happy with the album. So uh, yeah, there are promising signs for that one. Uh, but we have no, no idea what we're going to use it for yet. But uh, it's still, it's nice to, to, to continue the, the creative moment, um, momentum, really. Oh, it. <laughs> It really is, and that's got me so excited right now. I mean, the fact that there is one song that is being worked on right now, and, you know, whatever comes of that, whether it's released just as a single, or there's an EP, or next album that comes out sometime in the future. I mean, just seeing those creative minds still being able to write music, show the rest of the band, show everything that's going on, and, you know, just uh, getting the praise that it's even better than the album that literally just came out. I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, yeah it's yeah, great to see that positivity. One, just one person's, uh, that's just one person. Uh, you know, but but it's been yeah, people really, really, really like that song. So so that's nice, and we haven't shown it to to too many people yet. But uh, but yeah, it's early early signs are good. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I think with that, I think that's an amazing note to end on. Uh, leaving people yeah. wanting more and just knowing that there will be new Green Incarnation in some capacity coming up as well too. And uh, again, I thank you so very much for taking this time to be able to talk to me about everything that's going on with Green Incarnation. And of course, the new album, Leaves of Yesteryear, which is available now, it just came out back on Friday through Season of Mist. Easily, without a doubt, my album of the year so far, and I can't imagine anything topping it right now unless you guys come up with a surprise album at the end of the year. <laughs> but I just, okay. I love this from start to finish, from the artwork, which is just absolutely amazing, to the music videos, to the actual music and lyrics itself. And I thank you very much for being able to talk to me about all of it. Cheers. It's just a pleasure. Thank you very much. Oh, not a problem. Uh, before we're done, is there anything else you'd like to mention that I hadn't brought up yet? Oh. No, I think we touched on to the, you know, to the essentials. Uh, and the thing about the new song is actually exclusive for you for the time being anyway. So, so I haven't told anybody else about that yet. Oh, oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't even realize that. Well, thank you no. for letting me in on that information. Wow. Yeah. 